The Saskatoon Food Bank and Learning Centre is embarking on another ambitious campaign and we're talking today with Deborah Hamp from uh, the Food Bank. Thank you for coming down into the studio. Thanks uh, for having spending me. Spending some time here. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with the uh, Food Bank and Learning Centre. It's uh, a major key in, in the uh, community that unlocks a bunch of doors for people. So how did you get involved? Well, that's an interesting question. So I've worked in community for a long time before I came to the food bank and got involved just doing a small project um, with them and then never really left. So I've been there for about 12 years now and really enjoy my role and love the community and, and getting to know people and doing what we can to sort of walk beside people in their journey. You have a, a good volunteer base as well as uh, employed staff. Where do you get the volunteers from and what is the general scope of uh, a lot of their work that they bring and do for you? So volunteers come from so many different places. We see lots of retired folks that are looking to give back, that have had long careers and maybe had a little bit of time off and are bored looking for something to do. Um, we have school groups, people from the faith community, um, just all, all sorts of people, um, students, uh, and so people get involved by, they're looking for something to do, they're looking for a way to give back, and, and they'll maybe look around online and see who needs help and stumble ac across us and, and come in and, and uh, really enjoy the work. And it's the Saskatoon Food Bank and Learning Centre, and, and uh, I think that's important to touch on that. What, what other components are there that people should know about uh, over and above just the uh, the food component? Yeah, that's a great question. So the emergency food program is just one of the programs that we do at the Food Bank and Learning Centre. We also have a income tax program. And so people can come and get their taxes done at no cost if they're under a certain income level. And that really helps those benefits come back into people's pockets. That program over the years has raised millions and millions of dollars to put back in people's pockets and that money is spent locally. And so that's an important thing that we like to point out is that social profits can be economic drivers um, in our community. And so that's a program that we're really proud of and it's volunteer run and is very popular. We also have a garden uh, that we use as a community engagement tool where we grow produce that goes back into our food hampers and that uh, also serves as a place to teach and a place to learn about growing food and where food comes from and lots of community connections happen in that program. And then we have a, a program called Creating Opportunities that has different learning pathways. And so it might be people that want to learn how to write a resume or develop some life or employment skills. And then also um, there's literacy component and then working with us for six months on the floor in various departments. So getting for forklift certification and learning how to work in reception or our clothing depot, things like that. So at the end of that six months, people are ready and have reduced some of the barriers that are standing in their way of gainful employment or furthering their education. So you kind of lock them into the go position and, and get them ready for that employment world as well. Yeah, and right. we learn a lot from the participants too. Uh, the participants really help enrich the organization, um, help us be better at the services that we provide, and it's really a reciprocal relationship. The interest and uh, engagement by the wider community and the business community in, in sponsoring a lot of the initiatives that uh, you, Lori, and the team are, are doing there, uh, I, I find particularly gratifying to, to read and hear about. Uh, so let's maybe launch into the uh, the month-long campaign that's underway right now. What what are some of the, the goals and pressures that the Food Bank and Learning Center is experiencing? So right now it's uh, our citywide food drive and our theme is don't let your neighbors fall through the cracks because we know so many people out there are in a vulnerable situation, whether that's seniors or students or children. We know that one in four children in Saskatchewan are living in poverty, and it's just such an unacceptable number. And so we see people from in all kinds of different situations that are forced to rely on a food bank. And times are tough. You know, inflation is, is hitting everyone, the cost of gas, the cost of food, and 
housing, all of these things. Um, it's good that there's been a recent increase in the minimum wage, but it's still not a living wage. We know that a living wage in Saskatchewan is $16.50 an hour. And so people aren't able to save, they're not able to plan. They're just sort of barely holding their heads above water. And often food comes last. And so we see the effects of, um, of ill health on people when they're not able to access good nutrition. So the citywide food drive is really a way for the whole city to get involved and to give generously during the month of May. Of course, we need donations all year round, but the month of May, we like to draw attention to um, our most wanted items. You know, we, we need tuna and beans and pasta sauce. Uh, we're out of infant formula. There was a, a recall and there's also some serious uh, delays in in shipping for infant formula that are felt not just in Canada, but in the States. Mm -hmm. And so we're asking the public to get involved by coming by the food bank with non-perishable food donations and or dropping just a few extra cans of soup, dropping something, canned fruit, canned vegetables in the, in the bin at the grocery store and really helping us restock our inventory. We're quite concerned with the rising numbers. We're seeing close to 19,000 people a month and almost half are children. And when we think about school being let out soon and kids not being able to access breakfast programs or lunch programs, we know that that need is only going to increase. And so our supplies are low. They're lower than I've ever seen in all my 12 years at the food bank. And so it's, it's urgent that the public gets involved and, and helps out their neighbors in this way. It's a wonderful initiative that uh, it brings the community together and, and uh, I appreciate the candidness that we can openly talk about that need uh, and, and have more people engaged in uh, trying to participate. So if people did want to uh, contribute in some way, shape or form, it's, it's not just bringing food down to the, the food bank itself. Uh, is it at all the grocery stores or is it some place that you can just Yep. Put some food aside. All the grocery stores support our organization. They do a wonderful job in uh, redirecting food our way and encouraging the public to donate. So wherever the public is, there will be a bin in, in that store for the most part. And just to, to put those donations directly there. We also encourage businesses, the faith community, schools, groups, sports teams to get involved by hosting a food drive collect that food, bring it down to the food bank and, and help us restock uh, our supplies. Do you find uh, some opportunities might exist for whether it's sports, ball games or hockey or uh, maybe the theater as an example that uh, if, if someone wanted to do something, they could bring a non-perishable item. I think that's important to mention yes. uh, that they could leave at the entranceway if um, depending on, on you know who they're affiliated with and who's organizing it, someone has to organize it and, and get it down to us or ask us to come pick up. But we do like people to drop off just because our trucks are on the road five days a week picking up from grocery stores and other places. Um, but certainly we will work with people if they want to host a food drive for us, yeah. And is the food only available at the food bank or is it uh, delivered to people that might be shut in or have mobility issues? How would um, that get distributed? Typically, I would say, you know, about 99% of the time, uh, people do have to come down to the food bank. We don't have the, the vehicles on the road, typically, to get food out to people mm -hmm. with that volume. Uh, but we do, since COVID hit, we have had delivery in a very limited way to people who are isolating due to COVID or people who are in extremely vulnerable situations. And we've had a company, a construction company, step up to help us with that by delivering those hampers to people. And they've done that every twice a week for the last two years. So uh, we couldn't have done it without them for sure. You mentioned a number earlier, it was 19,000 people uh, per month that get served. Uh, is, is that necessarily 19,000 different people or, or is it uh, that many visits per month that are, are needed? Yeah, so it's 19,000 people represented. So mm -hmm. people can come to the food bank twice a month. Mm -hmm. And that could be two days in a row, or that could be every two weeks, or maybe at the you know beginning of the month and the end of the month, sure. um, in a way that works for people. And if someone uh, watching here does feel that they want to engage and do something, partner with you some way, shape, or form, uh, what would be the best way for them to either reach out to you, or if they have an idea, just want to talk, 
what would be the best way of doing that? Um, just to reach out to our main line and um, express what their interest is, whether it's a food drive or they're wanting to donate or volunteer, and our receptionist will direct them to the appropriate person. And I appreciate you uh, mentioning that it's not just the month of May. This is a a citywide food drive, but there is that need following uh, May 31 into June and so on. So, Absolutely, and, and people often think of Christmas as the toughest time, and it is a tough time, but summer is really critical uh, for so many different reasons, and uh, one of the main reasons being that kids aren't able to access those school lunch and breakfast programs. Well, we're pleased to help out. Thank you and Lori and your teams for doing the work they do, and uh, good luck here in May and the months to come. Yes, thank you. That's our show for today. I'd like to thank our guests, Josh Davidson from the Recreation and Tourism Program, as well as Deborah Hamp from the Saskatoon Food Bank and Learning Center. I'm your host, Randy Shabila. We'll see you next time on Connect. <music>